Okay. What do I got? Edit. Edit. Oh, okay. So. <coughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. So I was going to talk a little bit about the uh, using the different herbal substances for the chulin. Right. So you guys. Oh, the audio is okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Working. yeah. So yeah, I'm sure. You guys have already gone through so much about Chulen and how it's functioning and so on. So we'll talk a little bit about you know how the Tibetan herbs are working and then how that's working in the context of the Chulen. Um, so yeah, maybe some of you are familiar with uh, Western herbal tradition or um, or other traditions of herbal medicine. You can say Tibetan medicine has some unique aspects. Uh, one aspect is that. The Tibetan plateau is extremely, you know, very, very high elevation. It's the highest place on the earth, right? And so with this high elevation, there's many very special medicine plants that grow in this unique kind of uh, alpine environment. So with that, there's this incredible wealth of, uh, you know, Tibetan herbal, herbal tradition. Um, Bob, I remember you mentioned that you had asked the Dalai Lama one time what he thought would be the, the ideal economy of Tibet, That's if, right. you know, if there was no, uh, you know, disturbances, yeah, and and that he said, oh, the the Tibetan medicine and herbal tradition using their their ecological resources, yeah, you know, he said so, it could be the Switzerland of Asia, yeah, like sanitariums and healing and things, yeah, imagine that was his vision, his his reading. Right, so Tibet is this place that exudes this, you know, this healing energy. I mean, it's it's really there's there's nowhere else like it. That's that high elevation with that, you know, really unique richness of, of culture and so on. Um, so one aspect of the Tibetan herbal medicine is it has these incredible, unique, high elevation plants. Um, here we are. I mean, we're at what? 1,000 something feet? 1,600. We're at 1,600 feet elevation in the Catskills, so of course, you know, we can't access, you know, plants that grow 20,000 feet and so on, but, you know, of course, there are incredible uh, plants that we can find here in North America and European or commonly available Asian traditions as well. Um, and a lot of these plants we can use as also substitutes if we can't get this, you know, unique Tibetan one if it's threatened and so on. Um, so another aspect of this Tibetan herbal medicine that's very unique and, and really special is the way that it combines medicines together. So, um, you know, in the contemporary medicine, we look at individual components. So say we look at ghee, right? Maybe we'll try to find one molecule in ghee, like ghee e or something. There'll be some one thing you can take out of ghee, and they'll try to find, well, this is the thing that gives a function. Right? And so we're looking all to break things down into smaller and smaller individual molecules and so on. But Tibetan medicine th sees things um, you know, in this larger perspective of interdependence, you know, where one plant actually exists with so many kinds of qualities inside it. It has a different taste, different potencies. You know, it grows also with this interdependence of the land, of the, of the sun, the seasons, the other plants and animals. Right, so it's everything's part of a interconnected community. In the same way, when we make the herbal formulas, we don't usually use a single herb, although we can sometimes. Right, we can use a single substance, but more commonly, we make these herbal combinations. Right, so we'll mix these different herbs together. Um, it's like, for example, each one of us has our own personality. Right, but this personality can exhibit so many different kinds of expressions. Right? Maybe you with your child, you will act in a certain way. You with your parent, you will act in a different way. You with your enemy, you'll act in a different way. It's still you, right? But with different other people, you'll have different, uh, you know, ways of being. And the same medicines are the same, yeah? You combine, you know, two different herbs and they bring out different aspects of each other. Right? So when you make this combination, it can really be greater than the sum of its parts. So, you know, many of these little Tibetan pills, you can have like 35 ingredients, 70 ingredients, and so on. If you try to break down all the individual chemicals inside of it, there's, you know, some few micrograms of each. 
picogram, picogram, whatever, <laughs> right? Tiny little particles, but still this one pill with so many different compounds will affect you. And you can really, it's a tangible thing, right? So in that way, it's the power of this interdependent kind of community of different uh, medicines working together, right? So when we talk rejuvenation, you have to first understand a little bit this kind of background of how the herbs are functioning and so on. Um, right, and I mean, to study how Tibetan herbalism works is a huge study as well, right? There's, I mean, the main thing is we'll look at the taste, right? So each of the different tastes are composed of the different elements coming together, right? So in one aspect, you're eating some external substance, say it's food or medicine or whatnot, and you're actually consuming a combination of elemental properties, right? So that'll manifest as taste, and it'll also manifest as what we call a potency. So some herbs can be more warming, some can be more cooling, some can be more like a drying the body, some can be more like a nourishing the body, right? So there's many, many different types of potencies that can function in the medicines too. Um, so like that, I mean, it's a huge study. We can talk for seven days on very basic aspect of Tibetan herbal medicine. So I think maybe what's useful is to introduce some of the herbs that we're using um, and how they're functioning in the true land and so on. Uh, okay, so, all right, first we have this uh, Shiche 6. So Shiche 6 is the large pill, right? Have black you all been taking this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Large one? Yeah, the black the one. Toilet, yeah, everyone? We took two or two nights will come up. Yeah, so this is called the pacifier, mm -hmm. Shiche. Um, and this uh, shiche, so typically, this is typical in the Tibetan herbal formulas. You'll have a name or a word and then a number, right? So shiche six means the pacifier medicine with the six ingredients. We can have, mm -hmm. you know, it could, that name could be the name of a plant too. It could be like a rhododendron six. It's, you know, six ingredient medicine with rhododendron as the main ingredient, for example. Right? So like that. There's many of, you'll see this kind of name a very common name. So this Ashiche 6, right, is a very common medicine um, as a general purgative or a, like a, yeah, it's more like a, like a laxative and a soft purgative. So we have a six ingredients. The first one is this myrobalin fruit. So if you guys see on this uh, Medicine Buddha image up on the altar there, Medicine Buddha is holding this plant, right, in his right hand. Um, you can see here. Right. So this, uh, normally it looks more like uh, there's some fruits. Uh, maybe a hand there. Fruit? Yeah, this one. So uh, this is a Tonka illustration, right, of Medicine Buddha holding this myrobalin plant with the, with the fruits on it. Um, is that Andua by any chance? So it's a uh, harad. So there's three fruits, um, and there's three types of myrobalin. Um, in India they call tripala, right? So one is amala. Uh, uh, this one is a, uh, this is a uh, haritaki or hara, right? And this is the number one ingredient. I, I was doing some research trying to make some uh, kind of uh, putting all the different formulas from four tantras into my kind of database. And I, you can see how many, what is the most common ingredient used in the different ones. Aruda is coming up like one of the most frequently used medicines in four tantras. Oh, sure. In all the formulas, if you like make an analysis, it's one of like the most common. And if you know the taste of the arura, you taste Tibetan medicine, you'll recognize, <laughs> oftentimes you recognize that taste in the pills. Mm -hmm. So this arura is really incredible. Um, it's like a panacea. So this arura, it's, um, so one aspect, it's said to grow on the eastern mountain in the Medicine Buddha's Pure Land. And it's amazing because in India, um, there is a special mountain with the same name that is actually is a mountain full of forest of Aruda. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where is that? It's in Orissa. Orissa? Yeah. Um, near Orissa Jharkhand border. Mm -hmm. And it's called Gandham Arden. And it, it still exists. Unfortunately, the logging and uh, mining companies are trying to invade. There's some tribal people living there. But they say it's one of the best quality of this Aruda is coming from that. So I, I found that out last year. I was really wanting to make a pilgrimage to visit that Did area. you bring Aruna to here? Um, I can check. Maybe in my luggage I have a few. 
Yeah, actually, uh, Sri Shailam near Nagarjuna Kunda is yeah. part of the Eastern Ghats. Um, yeah. That mountain range is where this is coming from. Uh -huh. So they also have a lot of this. Uh, oh, cool. And also in Bhutan, yeah? Yeah, in, in Bhutan and pretty much all of North India too, it's growing. Um, it's a quite common tree. It grows in north or south? Um, actually, all over. So where I am, where I live in uh, kind of southwestern India, if you go into the forest, you can find this Arura tree is growing wild. Really? Yeah, what many is the Chinese name for Arura? They call it the Hezi. Hezi. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, but so I think in Chinese medicine... Jing, jing, jing. Yeah, it's not the most common substance. Um, if you look in the Chinese uh, Bensao, like the Materia Medica text, it was added later, after China started trading with India. Then they started using this, and probably also making China trading with Tibet as well. Then they started using this more in these kind of later material medical texts. Um, so in the Root Tantra, it talks about how, and this eastern mountain, uh, you know, in the medicine Buddha's land, is this forest of the Aruda. And on this, it, these plants, they're having every, it's really like a panacea. They have all the six flavors and all of the 17 potencies, or qualities, and eight potencies. Like, it's really this uh, medicine that can do everything. It can cure, like, all types of disease. Um, so it, that's a really unique thing about the Aruda. So magic fruit. Yeah. You can call it the magic it's fruit. It's really magic fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, many people, they talk about this uh, adaptogens, right? It's kind of a trendy word for, they say, oh, you know, you drink a mint tea, mint tea is adaptogen. I mean, it can do anything. But I think that's kind of lazy, lazy herbalism. <laughs> really, there's not many plants that really have the quality to kind of do all possible things. But I think Aruda is like a true adaptogen. Sure. Yeah. So <laughs> it's called is, the, the king of medicine. Yeah, in Tibet. Yeah, yeah. Menja. So the king of the medicine. Is that, and that's like A R U D A. A R U R A. A R U D A. So um. Yeah. Nelia Chibulia. Yeah. So it's got three fruits like that? Only. No, um, when you see it growing wild, um, I, I can find some other photos in my archive somewhere. Um, it, it's a tree, so it'll be growing, you know, it grows more on the, you know, throughout the branches in their spurs. But it's common in the iconography to show it growing more. Um, Is this that mine? Oh, I thought that's that arrow barbecue. Good question. No, it's typically Three Aruda. This yeah. is three fruits. It's talking uh, dharma, uh, wealth, mm -hmm. and happiness. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. that, that's medicine Buddha's uh, right, right, blessing okay. result. Right, right. Chernor Deva. Chernor Deva. Chernor Deva. Chernor Deva. Chernor Deva. This, yes. That's another name. This wealth and, and uh, reality of teaching. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so that's the first. If you know one Tibetan plant, you know Arura, right? The medicine Buddhist plant. And um, so that's another name for the Mylobalan. Yeah. So Mylobalan is a Western name. Oh, okay. And um, you know, kind of the common Western name. And uh, Arura is the Tibetan name. It's uh, if you want to find it here, it's more commonly available under its Indian names, just because there's many Indian grocers. It's a large exporter. Um, Mm. You want me to go back to Shichin? Yeah, you go all ingredients. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Um. You took it already, so we have to know what you took it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to find your own Aruda, you can find it typically if you search Haritaki or Harad. That's the Sanskrit or Hindi name, and uh, and you can typically find it. Uh, but yeah. the the problem is that often if you buy the powder, it has the seed ground with it. Mm -hmm. So in Tibetan medicine, they say it's really essential you remove the seed. Skin. No, you keep oh, the seed. You right. keep the flesh of the fruit, and right. you remove the seed. Okay. So the problem with a lot of these Ayurvedic exports, you don't know 100% if they're pro processing it right. So. You know, you just have to be wary of that. So that's this Aruda, the first one. 
Um, then the second one is uh, rhubarb root. So um, yeah, this is the you know the uh, this is a chumza, not chumza, right? So this is the big uh, the big one. Um, so this you can commonly find. Uh, it's not like your kind of household rhubarb. It's a quite large plant, um, you know, with really massive leaves. It can grow maybe two meters wide or so, you know? And the flowers are really quite large in You should plant it here. Yeah, it would grow well here. I think yeah. maybe we ordered it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a very strong purgative. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite an amazing plant. It's uh, also very common in Chinese medicine. Um, but, yeah, it's called the Dapong. And uh, yeah, there's a story, uh, I think it was the Qinglong Emperor, one of the, the Chinese emperors from, I think, Qing Dynasty. Um, the British were making trouble, right? And the British were trying to, uh, you know, cut the trade with China. Because basically China would just export all their Chinese products, uh, <coughs> medicines and tea, and they didn't want anything British. So the British were losing all their silver. And then, right. so the British then invaded. They tried to start these opium wars. And so um, then this uh, emperor, he wrote this letter. He's like, okay, we're going to kind of stop. We don't like you. We're going to try to stop, uh, cut off our connection with you. And how will you survive even one day without our rhubarb root? They heard that, like, the Westerners, like, if they didn't take this rhubarb root, they wouldn't be able to shit. Like, even one day. <laughs> so it's funny, it, it seems like it was quite a popular thing in uh, Europe before some of That's very true. Yeah. Because there are so many Westerners. They have constipation. Yeah, yeah, probably. Exactly. That's why we have to make uh, manna production, rhubarb. Yeah, manna exactly. rhubarb. <laughs> Everyone comes here, they take it, and they will shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we get a very good strong toilet, and everyone comes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the slogan you've been living. Yeah. yeah. So this, uh, yeah, rhubarb root. It's actually a really beautiful plant, and it gets these big, beautiful yellow roots. Um, so the rhubarb root, then uh, ginger or galango. So uh, you know, galango is this Thai ginger. But you can use the normal kind of dried ginger from the market. Um, this next one, a bulto. So we call it soda ash. Honestly, I don't know if there's a good English name. Because it's this special kind of salt that exists on the lakes. Like in, a, especially like in northern Tibet, yeah? Like in northern Tibet, there's these big, big areas with these massive lakes. And as the lakes dry up over you know, thousands of years, they leave this uh, sediment behind, this special like mineral. Borax. Isn't that borax? It's not, not borax. borax. It's too strong. It's a, it's a different mineral. I, I forget. I have somewhere written the chemical composition. Um, I should tell it's used for washing, yeah. like soap. Mm. Borax. That's the natural Is it not soap. the same thing? That borax and water yeah, in the uh, in Russia today, yeah. you see so many sure. sharks exporting that. Yeah. You yeah. use it it's in France. It's very good. Borax yeah. is called the setsa. Mm -hmm. It's another one. Okay. That's different. This yeah, is lighter than salt. borax. Yeah. Borax is more strong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is. Okay. Yeah, it's almost like, yeah, it's kind of the salty, almost like baking soda kind of. Uh -huh. It's a fun, yeah, it's almost like a baking soda kind of taste. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's this. Um, and the butok. So that mm -hmm. one is specially detox. It says, you know, we use also for washing clothes, the oldest soap in Tibet. It's not that we never wash, sometimes we wash once a year. <laughs> and then if you wash once a year, it's so dirty, we have to use this soda. It's this soda, it cleans so well, you know. So that's why in the medicine says, if you take it internally, it washes inside. So all the fat and, you know, all the toxins, dirt, everything will come out. So that's why the, um, in many Tibetan medicine, the purging medicine, it contains this bulto. Isn't the bulto and the chungsa, like, together they work, like, they kind of complement each other, mm -hmm. the rhubarb and this uh, ash? Inner wash. Yeah. <laughs> you can use soda ash in ceramic glazes. In college, we use soda ash as an ingredient yeah. in ceramic glazes. Yeah. yeah, this one, so I, I need to talk with the arbus to see what... You'll know what's a good definition of this one. Okay. Um, next one is uh, this uh, Manu, Manu Patra. So this is Inula Rasamosa, uh, it's very similar to Elecampane. You know Elecampane? Elecampane is a, it's a Western herb, uh, it's a European herb, but I'm sure it grows here. Yeah, Elecampana. Um, 
very similar to the high altitude Himalaya one. Um, but yeah, the Himalaya one, the original one, not so easy to get. It's, I think it's not officially a threatened species, but it's not so widely kind of distributed. You don't have the photos? Uh, this you one, I don't. Somewhere, I, I made this one okay. quickly, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this Mandu, uh, also, yeah, the organization that Tess and I work with, we're also growing some Mandu too. You can grow it here too, no? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It often grows in a little bit more dry place, like it's very common in Ladakh. Like almost like high altitude uh, desert kind of <coughs> condition, but maybe in a rocky area here, it should be okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, in, in this formula, what's the function of the Mandu? Clean the blood. Ah, right. Yeah, exactly. That inula specially cleans the blood. So it's an internal, very strong detox, you know. Washing the dirt, cleaning the blood. Rhubarb is cleaning the bile and liver. Mm -hmm. Arura is cleaning everything. And then the last one is the chongshi, or a calcite. Uh, maybe some of you have seen, I think I have a Calcite is a crystal. And so this is a natural. Huh? Yeah. So it says this is the what the male one, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's many different types and so on. Yeah, yeah. Many colors, yeah, many yeah. types. Yeah. So this calcite is a very common uh, mineral found in Tibet, and uh, right then it was used at very very ancient time. You see yeah, some of the original. Yeah, like this is the most uh, uh, used mineral in the medicine. Yeah. yeah. Calcite. Yeah. That's the medicine for ulcer, stomach acidity. Uh -huh. Okay, in future when you take turlin and fasting, if you get any stomach issues, stomach burning, acidity, ulcer, irritation, cramp, the calcite is the best medicine. Yeah. It's used to known as the no, noma, nomad medicine. <clears throat> you know, in ancient times, the nomad people, they collect the calcite and then they crush it and they carry these with small bags. So anytime when they have any stomach issues, they just take calcite powder directly. Mm. Yeah. You know, today there are many, uh, how do you say, many people, they have heartburn, very bad heartburns, mm. and there are many different chemical medicines, but this calcite medicine is better than chemicals. It's more effective, mm. and long-lasting effective, so it's a very good medicine. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, chemically it's basically calcium carbonate, which is also what you find in many antacids, but I think somehow this natural one has much better function than just like the chemical. Of course. Yeah, it's, uh, hmm. it's, it's really, you can see the difference. And uh, in this, so it's, it's almost always the ash, yeah? The chongxi ash. Yes, yes. So the, the chongxi, uh, the calcite, so you take it and you put on the fire and you burn it, make an ash out of it. Right, then this ash is somehow it's more easy for the body to assimilate and to go through and uh, have its function and so on. And one of the best uh, mineral for, uh, for the bones. You know many ladies, they have osteoporosis mm -hmm. and this is the best medicine. Mm -hmm. So in the detox, it, some text says it detox to cleans the bones. You know? Then your bones become stronger. Mm -hmm. So that's all of these uh, six ingredients for this pacifier medicine. So uh -huh. that's this black Do you have more medicines of this? How you can order? Yeah, I have some more. You have some more, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so you have taken already, but if you think you still need to clean, so you, now you know what you are taking, and mm -hmm. you can take this for a few weeks if you want. Uh, but if, the, if you are, how do you say, the things come out is a fluid, you know, only water, <coughs> only yellow, and then you should stop. But sometimes it just uh, stimulates you, and only the maybe soft the stool comes up, then you can take for a few weeks, about three weeks. One, two, twice a day? Yes. Yeah. Which one? One, two, twice? One. One today? One, yeah, once you can take two pills, if you need a stronger oh. one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Morning. Yeah. It's funny, I've noticed some people, this works really well, other people, it's like they have to take many. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, they're Westerners. Uh-huh. And one uh, Indian. Yeah. <laughs> I think she needs other type of stimulation too.
Yes, that's one thing again that that's, I noticed. Why make it so hard that you couldn't even chew? I think that's from the calcite. When the calcite, so maybe the soda ash. No, not the, from the calcite. This, now when they make the pills, they make the pills with uh, machines. Mm -hmm. So the one machine runs like very strong and they make it very hard. Mm -hmm. But traditionally we make with hand, you know, not so much hard. Yeah. But no. you're supposed to melt it in your mouth, then swallow, right? You cannot Not melt it. You can crush and easily chew. Can you mix some cake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. that will work. The, the easiest way is like this. You take the pill and put it in the hot water. Half glass of water and put it in the hot water. Soak there for a few minutes and then you can break it and then drink. Easiest way to mm -hmm. take it. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just swallow it. Doesn't work. Are still okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Very good part of medicine. Yeah. And so here's some uh, like a general indication. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, one thing this is also used to help the baby delivery. So anyone is pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> anyone is pregnant? Maybe. <laughs> Um, so it's common you give to the women uh, like one one week or so before they're due, and they take every day, and also it's helping to stimulate this descending wind and helping to like prepare for the baby to come out. It can make the delivery more smooth. So that's quite a nice thing. Mm. Anyone is pregnant in our group? No, nobody. No, no, not yet. No. Okay. That's good. So this medicine should be awarded by pregnancy. Yeah. What do you say? Pregnant woman? Yeah. Yeah. Did you write it down that one? Yeah. Okay. Baby woman. In the dream, in the dream, if you dream you are pregnant, what does it mean? <laughs> in the dream, you know, many people they can have like a dream. Also, even for men, they dream they are pregnant. Do you know what does it mean? Like it means creation, doesn't it? Of like an idea or so. it means you are stuck with obstacles. <laughs> so dreaming of a baby pregnant, it's uh, showing a problem. It's a very precise symbol, right? If you do it in the dream, it means you are able to release your problems or remove your obstacles. It's a very precise symbol. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. You say it's a contrast to indicate it's so it means you can't take it when you're pregnant? Don't take it until you're ready to make the baby come out. So only like almost nine months when you're just before the due date, then you can take it. But otherwise, you don't want to stimulate, uh, you don't want to generally take purgative and the medicines yeah. during the pregnancy. And sometimes, uh, if someone has uh, uh, problems with infertility, then they can take it. Because Tibetan medicine says the infertility is the descending wind stuck in the womb, you know, or in the ovary. So somehow there is a problem for ovary process and this. So if you take this medicine, it cleans up. Not only purging our our digestion system, so also it's purging uh, uterus, purging the uterus. Okay, so that's why sometimes also the infertile prob infertility problems we use this medicine. Hmm. So that's until you get pregnant. Yeah, and then uh, also good a general uh, digestive medicine too. If the digestion is stuck, it helps to move things a little. Um, and uh, yeah, also if you have uh, this uh, indigestion, like very initial stage of the indigestion, also is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dali 16. Mm -hmm. So here's another. This uh, Dali means a rhododendron. So here's a, I have a photo of this one. This is the black Dali. I think usually it's the Dali Carpo, yeah? Uh, Dali, this one. This one also. 
Yeah, so that's an amazing thing also. In Himalaya, there's so many types of rhododendrons. Himalaya is like, if you go in the springtime, like in Nepal or Indian Himalaya, it's like forests of rhodo blooming rhododendrons. So beautiful. But uh, there's uh, many species and many are toxic. So don't try to mix this uh, rhododendron stuff by yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is uh, a rhododendron medicine. Uh, what do you use? Do you use the flower or the brand or the seed or the what? It's the flower and leaves. Yeah, and they make the ash, right? Mm -hmm. So this also, you take flower and leaf, you dry it, and then you burn it to ash. Flower yeah. ash. And uh, yeah, so this one is Dali 16. Uh, just looking briefly, I didn't have the list of the other 15. So it's a Dali, and then there's some 15 other medicines too. And then break it down. But this is the one that's good for high altitude? Yeah, so this one is a, it's a special it is function. Effective. is like a diuretic. Yeah, like, like uh, what is that Western one that they, they give you? Diamox. Uh, it's also a diuretic. Mm -hmm. for us too. Prevents edema, high altitude. Yeah, exactly. As long as we're brain edema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as edema. So this is very effective. Yeah, it's a very good medicine. Yeah, if when you do children, you know, sometimes you have water retention in your leg, in your belly, maybe in your brain, like in your case. Water retention and, you know, if you have any water retention, Dali 16 is very good with children. It makes you pee a lot. You know, sometimes you take a Shiche 6 to try to go to a toilet tomorrow, but somehow you feel the water or you feel still bloated and then you take this one. This one make you pee and then you feel you are flattened. Mm -hmm. So true good medicine for flattening. Mm -hmm. yes, good. good news <laughs> for big bellies. Shiche <laughs> 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 six and Tali sixteen. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, once uh, one I think one lady, you know, she did the julin, fasting and this, somehow she didn't lose weight. She was not eating and she did purge and these things, but later we discovered she has water retention. You see, she drank, you know, juice and smoothie, water, she drank a, a lot and she was not eliminating enough, so somehow her body stayed the same weight, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we gave her Dali 16 for two weeks and she was shrank. Shrinking sure. weight. Mm -hmm. So how long do you need to take that? So I know that you told me to take it. So weeks. You have that ah. Until you feel your you strength. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Normally two, three weeks is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No, how many pills a day? Two, three pills. Yeah. Two, three pills. Yeah, it yeah. depends. The, do you have this Dali 16? Yeah, I think maybe it's What size? Like. So I think this is a little bit larger size. Yeah, it depends on the size. If it's larger size, you try with one. If one is helping you to pee, then it's okay. Otherwise, you take two. Yeah, so it's this bigger one. And that one, they can take two. Yeah? Do you have for the one or two? Yeah, I usually put 30 pills for one bag. Uh, okay. Yeah, people can take one or two. What is that, Dali? Yeah, this is the Dali 16. For the big belly? <laughs> yeah, that's for PP. Big belly, Shiche six, and Dali sixteen together. Yeah. Do you take Do you take that in hot water or just with water? Uh, warm water is better. Warm water. Warm water, yeah. Put it in the warm water. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Is there There's Dali? Oh, okay. It's got fifteen other. Yeah, so Dali, degree, I can look it up if you guys are No, ready. no, 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 but it's Dali 16. I'm just trying to figure out how... how so that, that's the, the Tibetan name of the formula, Dali 16. The translation is the rhododendron 16. Okay, okay. Yeah, and also... Uh, yeah, I think uh, quite common for weight loss, too. Also, it seems that uh, if people have kind of poor circulation related to the water, it's really helping to stimulate circulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, other things, but its main thing is just the draining the water. So those are some kind of uh, additional medicines. Then we have some actual, like actual Chulen medicine that we're using. 
right? We have the two main formulas. One is this uh, three fruits, and then the five roots. Uh, uh, five roots is the base of the, our shell car, uh, this white powder. Um, so three fruits, we talked already a little bit about the first one is Arura, right? uh -huh. the myrobalan. And then uh, Barura and Kyurura are two other myrobalan trees, right? So uh, yeah, Barura is also, Barura is a more close relative of the Arura. The trees have similar leaves and so on. Then the Sakurura is uh, what they call Amala. It's, uh, I read it's the most, um, like the largest production medicine plant in India. They have some like thousands of tons of this uh, amala. You know, you know why? Mm. Because in India there are many ladies. Yeah, and for this is hair the, care. the magic medicine for the ladies. Remember ladies. Mm. Amala. That's why it's called amala. <laughs> Ama. Mama. Mamala. That's, that's Kirura. That's the Mamma Mia plant, okay? <laughs> All ladies remember. It fixed the blood problems, menstruation problems, blood stagnation, skin problems, beauty, losing hair, and all these things. Kudura. Kudura. Yeah, it's a great medicine. So one of the best medicine for the blood. And the, you know, like when we did the breathing, the right channel is the solar energy, right? That's called the female energy. So the female energy is more based on the blood. Okay, so that's why this uh, Kirura is the best medicine for blood and blood energy is more important for women than men because that's why you have menstruation too, right? Menstruation is you're removing blood. And Tibetan medicine, we think this is the one of main reason that women can live longer than men, right? Women's life expense is a few years longer than men. Mm -hmm. Because about the blood purification? Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. it's like a menstruation is like a self therapy, every month's therapy, yes. like bloodletting. You release blood and renew blood, you know, so body gets more, how do you say, detox and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, so, yeah, so each of them, actually individually, all three of them can be a great medicine and used in so many things. And when you combine the three together, you have, it's called this a drebusum, right? It's like a three fruits, or a trifala. That's the one you took lunch. Did you take the lunch time? We took with honey, yeah? Mm -hmm. Did you take it? I did. After lunch. You're yeah. supposed to take before. One hour before. How did it taste? Delicious. <laughs> and very good for the skin, I told you, right? Very good skin. And also, it, uh, if you are losing hair, you can use externally or internally, also one of the best hair protection. And also in the spa, we have some uh, kunye oil made with this one too. Oh uh, yeah, you have it? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, it's really good. That's, it's amazing because this uh, three fruit really has like a function of cleansing and like nourishing together. And we feel so it's especially like, uh, you know, Commonly, people nowadays, they think of this uh, trifala as like purging also, yeah. right? It's very commonly you buy it, you know, people take it, you know, regularly for the intestinal health and these things. But I think purging yeah. maybe because they use the seed. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It seems it's because Tibetan medicine says seed is a little bit toxic. Uh -huh. So maybe that toxin has been purging. <laughs> okay. in, in Tibetan medicine, really common medicine to clean the blood and to generally like purify the internal body. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. Enough. I mean, just, I've seen Dr. Nita recommend so many, many times people to take this three foods. Oh, yeah, for everybody. Yeah. For like uh, skin problems, for uh, what you know, is it? for rejuvenation, yeah, yeah. For, yeah, many things. One Chinese young lady, she's a teenager, she lost her hair because of stress, study, exam, you know? She the her hair is becoming so thin. They checked in the hospital her thyroid and this and that. They didn't know what was. And then I never met her, but somebody asked me, "Is there any Tibetan medicine for against this?" You know, a teenager girl is losing hair. It's really bad, right? So I told them to take this uh, three fruits. She took it for three months, and she get all her hair back. Wow. Then she went to see her grandma, 
and grandma grabbed her hair and pulled like this. And she said, ah, it's hurting, what are you doing? Grandma said, ah, this is not a fake one. <laughs> grandma thought she has a fake hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then they call me in China, Shen Yi. Shen Yi. Margaret. Like miraculous doctor. Uh -huh. Shen Yi. Is it doctor? Yi Shen. Yeah. Shen Yi. Yeah. No, like Shen Yi. Like, like a magic, magical doctor. Yi Shen. Like a wizard? Okay, she's not here, she's not here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's my name in China, remember. Eh? <laughs> yeah, this, they call it, if you make a miracle, and then they call you that name. Yeah. It's uh, like a holy doctor, something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was a very good example. You know? So, yeah, hair grows. So that's this uh, blue fruit. Um, yeah, and commonly you can either take like powder by itself or you can take mix with the ghee. Right? So you can commonly find like the two different preparations. Um, so when you take powder by itself, it seems more cleansing, and with the ghee, is more like a building, Nourish. and nourishing, and so on. Yeah, also building. building. Yeah. With honey, especially good for phlegm, water. Yeah. Okay, five mm -hmm. roots. Next one is the five roots. So these are like uh, five tonic, five special tonic roots. Um, and uh, yeah, many of these, the original one is not commonly available. Um, in our powder here, this should be the original one. Um, but also, if you make yourself or you know, try to find some like Western preparations, then uh, you can use these like other substitute too. So the first one is uh, Mirabilis. Um, is a, yeah, it's a small plant, high, high elevation plant. Uh, actually, I believe there are, they call it a four o'clock. Um, oh. you, can, you can grow it, it's available as like a cultivar too, you know, in like garden shops. But I think it's not the same one. Um, it's uh, like a, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a bread, it's like kind of uh, domesticated one. Okay. So yeah, I think better uh, better not to try to use that. Yeah, I think that one is toxic. Mm. Yeah, possible. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this uh, first one, uh, but commonly they use the uh, ashwagandha. You know, even uh, in the original Tibetan Materia Medica, they say ashwagandha is like a synonym. Mm -hmm. So oh, really? okay. yeah, so it seems like uh, unless this withania somnifera of the bathroom, yeah. So like in the Mensikong, India, uh, they said they're sometimes using the Indian ashwagandha for this. Yeah, because this uh, the original bachu can be is a um, like for bachu, the um, withania somniferum. Ah, okay. Yeah. If you come to Goa again, we'll have many okay. growing. Yeah. Um, the next one, uh, tribulus terrestris. Um, so this one, this uh, sema, this is actually. Uh, it's kind of in fashion. You can find people taking these capsules of the tribulus, some kind of like a, you know, like the GNC kind of yeah, places. Yeah, Viagra, Viagra. Yeah. Viagra. Um, Anyone needs Viagra? <laughs> That's the natural Viagra tribulus now. Yeah, it's a very nice. It's um, it's a plant. Have you, like tried? A, Have you tried? Yeah. <laughs> it works. I hope so. Yeah, and uh, it's used for like a urinary problem a lot, yes, kidney yes. disease. Yes. Um, and this tribulus, it's like a, one of it's one plant that when you're walking like in the forest, and it, it many like little thorns and it sticks on you. It'll stick on your pants, little things. Um, they call it puncture vine because also it's like it'll puncture the tires on your car. Oh, wow. But uh, little ones, yeah, little sharp ones. Yeah. Then the next one is this Angelica glauca. So this is a kind of uh, high-altitude Himalayan angelica root. Anyone know angelica? Mm -hmm. Sure. It's uh, here you have what, archangelica commonly? Or? Angelica jolly. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, the local angelica? Angelica archangelica? Or? That's, that's uh, common in Western herbalism, they use that one. I think uh, some similar similarities in the angelica. Angelica root, that's 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a um, it's also, <laughs> I, I think today in our time, you know, the people are overworking, right? So many people do work, <laughs> right, Margaret? Yes. So many people they do business work, men out and travel, business, this, this. What do you need to take? They should take the five routes. Mm -hmm. Distress. Yeah, giving energy, tonic, and very powerful. I think it's like five roots, and an easy way to understand is like a, taking ginseng, you know ginseng? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taking ginseng, like five types of ginseng mixed together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Like energy boosting. It's a very powerful. No? Mm -hmm. Okay? So today, you know, if you tell people to, okay, don't work too much, you have to rest this and that, you think, what? Right? <laughs> You know, I think that's why the, the workers, the, you know, the hard workers, if people are really working and working, the best medicine you're taking is one. I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then even you work, you have energy and you are protected. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can, like, want me to explain the rest yeah. of it? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's this Angelica, also, yeah, really great medicine. Um, then the next one, the Polygonatum, it's a kind of Himalayan Solomon seal. Um, but the Western Solomon seal can often be toxic, so you have to be careful. Um, yeah, this one also, I think this specific one is not available. You can't, we're trying to grow it in Indian Himalaya, but haven't grown much of it yet. Um, there are some Chinese Angelica and Polygonatum that have a tonic property, I think can be good too. Um, there's one like Huang Jing. Huang Jing? Is, Huang Jing, yeah, it's like a, like a black kind of kind of glutinous thing. Um, that's a very good like uh, tonic polygonatum. So last, last time we made the five roots, I, I mixed that. Um, and the next one is this asparagus adsensis or racemosus. This is a, uh, yeah, it's not, it's related to the like asparagus, the, the food, but it's a different plant. Um, it has this special kinds of roots. It has many, like many white roots. That come up. Yeah, it's really beautiful when you see it. Very distinctive if you see it kind of harvested or dried out. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo. Um, but it, yeah, basically all of these medicines have a similar idea of their kind of tonic, um, tonifying the body, you know, building the strength and so on. Um, strengthening kidney. Mm -hmm. Many of them are good for this like chuser, like the water, water mm -hmm. and lymph issues and so on. <coughs> so that's the five roots. So the other white powder, this uh, shelkar chulen, is uh, the main ingredient is this five roots. Shelkar, that's mm -hmm. the one you're taking with ghee. Did you take it lunch time? Mm -hmm. But main ingredient is tahmu. In tahmu, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So tahmu, do you want to tell the story of the... I told the story already. Okay. I <laughs> hope this still remembers. <coughs> Which one? Yeah. The, the old man. The, the man who kicked... Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <coughs> right. And then there's the Bodhisattva story of how the plant kind of... Yeah, yeah, you can tell them. them. That's I didn't tell. Yeah. I don't, maybe I don't remember all the details, so... <laughs> you do remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice I try. It. No, no, actually, it's funny, because I was, I was looking it up, trying to find, I was looking in the sutras, trying to find the original reference, and you can find this Takamu Bodhisattva, but I couldn't find the part how he incarnated with the plant. Uh, okay. But yeah. That I, part I told you. Yeah. <coughs> so there's a bodhisattva. He's always crying and he incarnated oh, with the plant. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm trying to have Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the details of his story? Sure. Yeah, he was, uh, his name is Always Weeping. <laughs> and he's in the Prajnaparamita Sutra. And uh, he had a vision from studying Prajna Paramita with his guru, whose name was Dharma Gupta or Dharma Kala. And uh, he had a vision of thousands of Tathagatas, of Buddhas, like vast, like, like atoms of Buddhas everywhere. He had this vision. And he was so happy and felt so satisfied from that vision. And then the vision went away. So, but he didn't care. And he was partly crying because the vision went away, and he was partly crying because he was so happy about the vision. And then he decided he wanted to make an offering to his guru for having taught him the Prajna Paramita, Transcendent Wisdom. So, so then he, but he didn't have any money or anything. So he went out and he offered to sell 
a pound of his flesh. And he was out by the road waving anybody who wanted a pound of my flesh. And, uh, and he was crying there. You know. So then this merchant's daughter came by on an elephant and she fell in love with him. And she said, no, 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 you don't want to sell your flesh, you want to save that. I have plenty of wealth, my father will give it to me. And I will go with you and we will go make uh, offerings to your guru. So then he goes off to find the guru with her, with her on the elephant with big bags of wealth. And then they buy every kind of thing you can think of. But even that, he's not satisfied. So he starts bleeding on the earth. The earth is too dusty and it's not, there's no water. So he starts to smooth the earth with his blood. And he just goes crazy. He's <laughs> great. And he's very happy and it's described very beautifully in the front of the But he's quite happy, but he's crying all the time. Then that Always crying. The blood becomes the flower. Yeah, I think that's, that's, right. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And uh, the guru comes and gives some more teaching, you know, it's really quite nice. I like that one. Mm -hmm. It's not like the one, there's another one about the Bodhisattva who is uh, always creeping. That's in the Lotus Sutra. The Bodhisattva always creeping. And he has a vision where he sees everybody as a future Buddha. He sees that they're going to be Buddha. So when he, everybody he meets, he starts bowing down to them. So then some people who are like maybe in the market, they're, they're overpricing their oranges or something, and they're cheating people, and they don't like it. He says, oh, you're a Buddha. Oh, that's great. You're going to be Buddha. And he starts bowing to them. So then they go, get, go away. I'm not a Buddha. I'm just an ordinary person. And they throw stuff at him. But then he, as he creeps away from them, he keeps bowing to them. And that's his particular yoga. <laughs> I like that one. That was creeping his heart. There's numbers of bodhisattvas like that. They just go crazy with the beauty of the Dharma and the Buddha. I'm sorry. No, it's great. So it's actually who is a plant. So then, I don't know, but it's not in present practice where he becomes a plant. But you say he becomes a flower, so then it's from his blood, maybe. Yes, yes, yes. The blood creates a plant. But bodhisattvas in the prayer in the Shantideva's book, in the Bodhisattva prayer, the Bodhisattva says, when I want to be medicine for people to eat and have it put next to them, next to their bed. Yeah. I want to be a lamp, I want to be a bed, I want to, well, you know, any kind of inanimate object also they can pray that they could be. Anything that will help beings. Mm. Right? So they do say that. But I don't know a particular story about what it does. Yeah. But maybe that, that's good one. So there's a Taktunu flower? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the main ingredient in that. Yeah. That's the main ingredient? In this really? uh, shelter too, man. That's the one, is that, which, which one of those? It's not in the, the oh, five groups are the other mm -hmm. base of the next. I see, I see. That's amazing then, because he's just so grateful, because that's the whole point. You know, people don't understand that people like Buddhism. Buddhism is a popular thing, not because it's some fanatic religion, but because when people become more realistic and they more treat themselves and others in a more practical and realistic manner, they get much happier. Mm -hmm. So then they feel grateful. And they, and they want to see others have the same access. You know, that's, that's basically the reason. It's not, uh, it's not like some cult of blind faith or something. Lotus. Yeah, so, that, so this, uh, when you take this uh, powder, you can imagine you're eating the blood of this weeping Bodhisattva. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. What's the Barura. Indian name for the Barura? Barura um, is a uh, Bibitaki. Bibitaki. Bibitaki, yeah, or um, or Bara. Baritaki, yeah. um, Bibitaki, Amalaki, yeah. And uh, yeah, and then also asparagus. Yeah, asparagus. Yeah, we said already it's the one that has many of these uh, white roots going down. Um, this one you can find. Uh, they say there's the male one and the female one. The like a poric and poric. The female one is commonly available. You can find it as Shatavari, which, uh, yeah, very common also Ayurvedic plant. You can get like organic cultivated one. The male one, they call Safed Musli, unfortunately difficult to find. But it's more, the male one is typically the one they use in the medicine. Um, and the male one is also more kind of, more Viagra effect. The female one is a little more cooling and more like a, nourishing. Um, but also, so we can commonly mix these three fruits and five roots together. 
So, um, I like, see the shaker, they have three for two. It doesn't taste. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little. Yeah. You have halong basang, no? Hmm? You have halong basang, no? So, I wanted to ask you also the difference between the. Okay, so halong and uh, basam and uh, like a basam Myanmar, uh, Dorje Palam, all the same thing or they're different? Yeah, yeah. Basically the same. Okay, because I saw some different recipes. <coughs> so yeah, so what we made this uh, these brown jars here, are these uh, three fruits and the five roots, like with this uh, shell car chulen, um, and also the puram, which is the natural brown sugar, and um, also a kind of medicine orchid. We added a little bit of this medicine orchid. That's sweet. Medicine orchid? Yeah. Huh. It's uh, very special. Uh, actually, I have a, not this one. This is one very common medicine orchid <laughs> called a wangla. Um, we didn't have this one here, but we had a different one. Uh, really? Another, it like, works. a special one. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, this is the best flower for infertility. Especially for men, it increases the sperm's energy, sperm's quality, mm -hmm. and even sperm number. Yeah. It's very funny. Some people they just take the root of the powder. After one month, they check, analyze the laboratory. The sperm number is already increasing. Yeah. It works very well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So yes, yesterday we talked about the julen. Do you remember the function of julen? Stay. Yeah. What is the name? What are the julen functions? Healthy. Stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Sexy. Happy. Happy. Sexy. Yeah. And sexy. So that's the sexy plan. <laughs> that's the. It's the root of the of this uh, orchidea. Yeah? yeah. It's a Latin name is Dactylorhiza. It's a. I don't know. How it's the called. Greek orchidea means uh, testicles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Orchidea. Actually, the, the root is, looks like a testicles, so it's very interesting. Our sperm is produced in testicles, right? Yeah, it's something very funny. But then the, the best quality, that one, the root is looks like a baby's hand. Some of them exactly like a baby hand, you know, the five fingers. This one, six fingers, right? Yeah? Six fingers. You have other examples? Yeah, I only have these two photos here. This one, this is the orchid itself growing. And uh, here's the, just the root. Yeah, unfortunately, this is almost impossible to grow. The plant is so good for human reproduction, but the plant doesn't reproduce itself so easily. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's, we have not, no one has found a way to cultivate it. Yeah, yeah really wonderful medicine. So, but uh, we didn't have this, we had a different one. A uh, different kind of uh, rejuvenation orchid to put inside. It's here, yeah? Yeah, inside that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so those are, that's the medicines we have here. Um, and then also maybe we should, did you talk about the three horses and stuff? No, 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 I can say yeah. So also, um, right, so we, I think Genela mentioned how like the salty taste is not good for the rejuvenation. And the sweet taste also can be like a positive thing to build and revitalize the body. Um, and typically there's like these three kinds of sweets. We call them the three medical horses um, that are, they're used, you take it with the medicine to kind of help help it target the body as different tissues and help to work on the different energy and so on. Mm -hmm. So they have the, uh, for the uh, bile, you know, this tripa, the hot nature uh, disturbances, hot nature typology, they have a, like a natural white sugar. Of course, nowadays people take so much white sugar that I think in the past maybe medicinal effect of the white sugar was a lot better. <laughs> nowadays I think we're already overdosed in the white sugar, uh, especially the refined one. Um, but still, in some kind of formula, they'll mix with the white sugar too. Um, and then for lumu, for wind, it's this uh, puram. So here outside they have the molasses syrup. That's also a similar kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, pura. Yeah, well the molasses, like the liquid uh, one. That's the best for lung people. Hmm. And, and you can in. you can put in your milk. And <coughs> <coughs> that yeah. make clove milk and then you make it sweet. Molasses? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Molasses, yeah. Molasses, yeah. <coughs> and it's you know, it's a lot of these minerals and kind of this uh, kind of warm, dark nourishing 
kind of a thing. And then for the, the Deccan people, the phlegm is the honey. Right? So honey is, has this special kind of sharp nature and a little bit like uh, it's got this solar energy to it. So it's good for warming the body up and like uh, cleaning and scraping out the fat. And these things. So if you drink honey with hot water, you feel lighter. It's like a light sweet too. Mm. Uh, white sugar is more cooling, but you can get excited if you take too much. And uh, ma molasses, molasses, yeah. molasses is calming. So it's the best to sweet in Italy, calming sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. people. So yeah, the brown sugar, okay. One thing, if you go to the market and you buy brown sugar, right? Say so you go to, do you have Safeway here or is that West Coast? IGA. Yeah. What's it? IGA. IGA, right? You go to the big commercial supermarket and you bring, buy brown sugar. Right, this brown sugar is really like a poison. Because, I mean, it's, it's white refined sugar, the color, yeah. which is the poison, and then they extract molasses out, then they add some molasses to make it brown. It's really not like a proper brown sugar at all. Um, but you can get this like a rapadura sugar or supana. This is like, basically they take the juice of sugar cane and they just evaporate, boil it off. And that's like this natural brown sugar. And that's the good one. Right? But it shouldn't look like white sugar crystals that are brown. Right, so it should really say like this, like organic, natural brown sugar, and then yeah, and that's uh, basically molasses and this puro or this uh, natural brown sugar kind of similar. Molasses has less sweet part inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the best form of molasses to buy too? Right, you have to watch. I guess some of the processed molasses that are extracted. Yeah, yeah. What the best kind is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you can get like a uh, organic from like a good source with blackstrap molasses, that's good. Um, Organic's good enough for not to watch out for. It, yeah, because typically the process yeah, of refining. Sure yeah, in the US. Like uh, yeah, I think maybe like in Florida yeah, or some of the southern US, yeah. they're growing sugar. Yeah. Hawaii, they grow a lot of sugar. Yeah. Sugar Actually, sugar. not anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. Hawaii, the whole islands, they were growing sugar, and recently they stopped it. So, well, it's actually good because right. the sugar was destroying the island. Yeah. Hawaii so originally not natural. It's, it's no, uh, naturally, originally Hawaii was the land of sandalwood trees. Cut. And they cut all the sandalwood trees down, and they put like sugar and pineapple. Cut that shit. Sugar company. Huh? Angel sweetness. White people. Yeah. 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 Oh, the Coke brothers. Yeah. What was the jaggery that you're getting? The yeah. Soul? yeah. Jaggery. This Indian jaggery is the actual closest thing to this, like Tibetan puram. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the you know, you basically yeah, take that this jaguar is we use the brand sugar. Yeah. Puran, That's no? freely yeah. available. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you go to Indian markets and this stuff, yeah. But with the jaggery, you can get some from the sugar cane, some from the palms. I think it's more from the, uh, right, it's from the sugar cane, not from the palm tree. Or mm, yeah, sugar. Yeah. Okay, any questions about herbs? Uh, speaking about sales.